So why do these exist? <laughs> like, why have a distinction between open and closed records? Well, we've seen quite a few examples, and, and you know, one question you could say, or one way you could think of it is like, well, how would you do any of those examples otherwise? But it actually really boils down to one thing, which is essentially uh, based on the following example. Let's say I have like, a type alias model. It's got name, which is a string, age, which is an int, and then post, which is like a list of posts. Um, and uh, in, in comparison, I have uh, like uh, type model equals uh, model string int list posts. Now, we don't need a notion of records at all if we have custom types, as we can see here. I mean, really, this models the same information. Right? I, I'm, in both cases, I've got one value named model, and it holds on to a string, an int, and a list of posts. Now, granted, it's nice to be able to tag these with names, like to say this is a name, this is age, this is posts, especially because what if several of them, like multiple, of them, multiple versions of them were strings? I don't want to have model string, 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 int. That's, that's going to be very confusing, very error prone. So records you know, make things less error prone. There's clearly a use case, but uh, strictly speaking, they don't need to exist. And in fact, there are plenty of ML family languages like Elm, which either don't have a record system or have a record system that's uh, not nearly as flexible as the one that Elm has. So uh, why bother having them at all? Essentially, it's for this, and, and only this. The ability is to say record.name. It's that dot syntax being able to say, I know I've got a record. I want to access this field on there and be certain that it exists. If you want to have that and you want to have type inference, it's really hard to do that without something like open records. So that's the whole reason they exist. And I mention this because there are a lot of other things that they can be used for despite the fact that all they're intended to be used for is literally this. And this is relevant, or potentially relevant, because of the implications that this might have for the future of the language, uh, which we'll get into in a bit. Okay, so here's one of the things that they happen to be able to be used for, is naming arguments. Um, I talked about this in Elm Europe 2017. Um, so let's say I have a function called validate, and it takes email, first name, and last name, and returns blah, I don't know, some, some validation result. Email, first name, and last name, in this example, are all strings. So anytime I see this as a type signature, I, alarm bells go off in my head. I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to definitely mix those up at some point in my life um, and make a mistake. Um, one way to solve this is by using sort of uh, records as a means of uh, creating sort of pseudo-named arguments or faux-named arguments. Some languages have first-class support for like, that's, that's like a feature, it's named arguments. But um, we can do the same thing in Elm using records if we want. So I'm just saying validate now takes email, which is a string, first name, which is a string, last name, which is a string, um, and then I just destructure them immediately. So it's as if I had, I, have, I end up with the same things in scope as with the previous version, but now the caller has to specify here, here is the email, here is the first name, here is the last name. So it's no longer as error prone, but now it doesn't support partial application anymore. So that's a trade-off. It's a, it's a reasonable choice to make either way. Um, but there's also one more way I can do it, which is I can do the same thing as the previous example, except I can make this an open record. And now this means that I could potentially do something like um, if my model happens to have a field called email and a field called first name and a field called last name, I can just say, hey, validate model. And it will only use those three fields from the model, which is in a lot of ways better than taking the entire model um, as an argument. And, uh, and it'll still work the same way as the others did. So again, not something it was designed to be used for, but as it turns out, it is something we can use it for. Um, another thing uh, we can potentially do uh, to solve the same problem is to make one of them a custom type. So let's say that uh, instead of having email be a string, we said, you know what, email is a separate notion of a string. I'm just going to make a custom type called email. Might even not bother making it opaque and just say, look, if we have an email, that's a different thing from having a string. An email is just conceptually different. It's, it's a special type of string. Um, the second function, I would argue, is not really error prone. So it's taking email, first name, and last name. Now, granted, that is still taking two string arguments right in a row. But passing last name, first name is not really a mistake I don't think I've ever made in my career. Like, I always pass them first name and then last name. Um, I could maybe get paranoid and do it even, even more so than this, maybe use the record. Um, I don't think I would go as far as making a custom type for first name and a custom type for last name. Um, but you could if you, if you were really concerned about it. 
But I think this is a, a sort of a more lightweight way of solving the same problem, especially because email is likely to come up in a lot of different places. And having a, a custom type for email is, is something that's going to pay off beyond just this function. And in fact, in this code base, I specifically did do this. I actually made a custom type for email so I can disambiguate when I have an email versus I have some meaningless string or, or some uh, string that I'm not as you know, concerned about. Um, uh, so this is the, the way you could do it with an opaque type or even just uh, a custom type that doesn't happen to be opaque. Um, and finally, uh, the other thing that you can use opaque, uh, sorry, open records for is for modeling data. This is another unintended use uh, for them. Um, so there's two ways to do the following thing. One is with a type parameter. The other was with an open record. So let's look at the open record way first. So you say type alias article A equals A pipe title, which is a string, and tags, which is a list of strings. So this comes up in the following scenario. Um, we have a feed full of articles that we load. And in that feed, we'll have, I don't know, maybe it's, it's like 10, 20 articles, something like that. Um, and each of them just shows a preview of the article. It has like the title and then the author and a, like a little blurb about it and then like a link to read more. Now also, sometimes articles have a body that goes with them, like the entire text of the article. And when we're viewing the article's page, like where we click the link to read more, we view the entire article, we want all this info, like the title and the tags and all that, but we also want the body. So we essentially want to have two variations on article. We want to have one which is a preview of an article, and then the other which is the full article, including the body. Now when we're loading the feed, we're not going to get from the server the entire text of all 20 articles. That would be way too much data to transfer because we're not going to bother using it. So the server is only going to send us the, the preview information. But when we go to the full article, we do want the body. We want all that other stuff, plus we want the body. So how can we say, I want to have an article that sort of shares these two pieces of common information about the, the metadata of the article, um, but which uh, separately has, uh, uh, in some cases, a body and in some cases does not. A pretty common way that people reach for to do this um, when they realize that open records are a thing is, is this, because it's, it's available and it, it works for that use case. You can also do it, though, with a type parameter. You can say type alias article A equals, and just add that type parameter on the end. And essentially say, OK, um, I, I've, got, I've got some sort of article here um, that, uh, that has some, some particular piece of extra information associated with it. Um, so the problem over here is, is sort of like, what type will we extend this with? Like, uh, if we're doing it using an open record, that type must be a record. Whereas if we're just adding it as a type parameter, we can have it be whatever we want in whatever field we want. Could be a custom type, could be anything. 